Hey guys and welcome back to a new Material 3 Expressive video. In this video I will cover all those new loading and progress indicators that we have in Material 3 Expressive. You can already see two of them here, which are so-called loading indicators. So previously in Material Design you may have known the typical circular progress indicator uh, that simply keeps on looping and is in the end an infinite animation. Same thing here for those loading indicators, but Material 3 Expressive actually distinguishes between loading indicators, which this one here is, so an infinite one, which is uh, only circular or in this case quite fancy with those morphing shapes. But the second type of loading indicator is actually not called loading indicator, but progress indicator, which we are seeing here. Progress indicators are indicators that in the end show a progress, so a value between 0 and 100%, and there are quite some new ones of these. So while we already had these uh, linear progress indicators in previous Material 3 design, those were already existent, and I think also the circular one with the progress, we now also have those wavy uh, progress indicators in varying thicknesses. So that is what we'll go over here, all these different types of loading indicators, progress indicators, when you should use which one, you can see this one comes in two types, on the one hand without and with a background, so you not only learn how you can actually use those in code, but also have a clear guide when to use which of these. So I'm here in Android Studio and the first thing you need to do in order to follow through this video is make sure that you have the right Material 3 dependency. You need an, at least an alpha version of 1.5.0. If you're watching this at a later point, then you may be fine with a stable version. And I would say we create a new package here called loading in which we play around a little bit with those new loading indicators. So let's say loading indicators file, make this a composable, loading indicator. And well, as I mentioned, we need to distinguish between different types of loading and progress indicators. So specifically loading and progress indicators. So I want to actually put these in a column here to center these. So actually, I think we already centered this here in this column. So I would say, yeah, we don't need the column here. I would say we actually start with the normal loading indicator. So the infinite ones, which was previously the circular progress indicator, and that one is still there. So I will add this just as a comparison for you to see how this uh, looked like previously. You can of course still use this, but if you want to use these new material for expressive like uh, loading indicators with a shape morph effect, then we want to use the loading indicator composable. And if you ask me, I find this quite confusing with all those different names that we now have for, in the end, the same type of composable, because to me, it's not obvious that this loading indicator composable here is a shape morph loading indicator. And this one here is simple circular one. Well, that is clear due to the name, but this one here doesn't make it very clear that it's the expressive specific loading indicator. And then we also have those wavy linear circular progress indicators and so on. So I think this is a bit confusing, but I'll still show you, of course, which options we have. For this normal loading indicator, let's hit Alt Enter and opt into this experimental API. And additionally, also have our wavy loading indicator. Oh no, it's actually not called like that. Uh, because that would be a progress indicator and not a loading one. What I want to show you is the contained loading indicator. So it contains an actual background color. I will tell you in a moment when to use which of these, but let's make sure we take this composable and we add it into our column here by calling a loading indicators in here, indicators, import this and launch this on our device. So there we are. Those are the three types of loading indicators we have here in Material 3 Expressive Design. This one here being the original one that was also there without Expressive. It's still got redesigned a little bit and has a slightly different animation, if I'm not wrong, but it is in the end a plain progress indicator without any fancy animation. Like this one here, you can see, this is the, the Expressive specific loading indicator which has this shape morph effect and in the end just transitions from shape to shape here and shows a loading state that way. Sometimes, however, you may want to actually have a background for this loading indicator just to maybe make sure it stands out a bit more from the surface you're drawing this on. I think for such a plain screen like here where we really just have a solid background color and we wanted to show such a progress indicator at the center of it, then I think this contained one here would really stand out the most. But if you may be showing a very small indicator somewhere as a little part of an element, then this one here without a background color is also just as nice. Also, maybe worth mentioning when should you actually use such a loading indicator here. 
According to Google's recommendations, you should use such a circular, and I will still just call all these circular progress indicators because they all have this rotating effect. According to Google, such a progress indicator makes sense if the expected loading time is between 200 milliseconds and five seconds. So very typical for something like making a network request or I don't know, parsing some kind of image or so, then such a loading indicator here definitely makes sense. What this also means is, if the expected loading time is below 200 milliseconds, so for example, loading some items from a local database, then Google recommends to not show a loading indicator at all because the results come pretty much instantly. And the user wouldn't even have a chance to notice in this fraction of a second that something is currently loading. If your expected wait time is longer than five seconds, it's not recommended to use one of these loading indicators here, but rather a progress indicator, at least if you know the current progress of something. And that is what I will show you next, how we can implement that by going in our loading indicators and maybe have the infinite indicators here. And then we also have progress indicators where we have to assign a clear progress value. So let's maybe have a simple animation here, but this progress value in a real app would of course come from maybe a file upload or so, which your networking library would give you. So in here we would have a progress. We can actually, let's make this an infinite transition. So let's say a repeatable is equal to remember infinite transition. No, let's call it transition. So it's called infinite, tran um, infinite repeatable. We'll call it transition. And then we have our progress where we say by transition, animate float. And we say, I'll enter on the one hand to import this function. And the initial value of our animation can simply be 0%. And the target value can be 100%. So we animate our progress infinitely, always from start to finish. Let's also say we pass an animation spec here. Here it doesn't make sense to use our motion animation spec that I've shown you in the first video of this playlist because, well, it should reflect the true progress. Well, in this case, it's an animated and simulated progress anyways. In, in the real world, you wouldn't have this animation spec here because the progress would, as I mentioned, come from some kind of networking library or whatever thing you are actually progressing. But here, what we can say is the animation spec is an infinite, yeah, here we need to pass this infinite repeatable where the animation is equal to a tween. We can say, okay, over which specific duration uh, we want to make this animation. Let's say five, let's say six seconds. So we have a progress here that goes over five seconds. Repeat mode is repeat mode restart. So it starts from the beginning on again. And then we can simply have our three different types of progress indicators. On the one hand, the completely normal linear progress indicator here, that takes in a progress value. And you can see this by default, if we don't pass in a progress value, it's also an infinite one. So if you want to show that, then uh, this is absolutely doable as well. Now also, by the way, uh, tell you something in a moment, how you could uh, combine this infinite progress indicator with one that shows a progress by assigning a progress lambda here. This is put in a lambda by placing our progress here. So you can see now we suddenly have a progress that animates towards the end and then starts over again. And this in a very linear fashion. Let's also do this for the other types of progress indicators before I then show you how you could mix those two because that's also something that does make sense in certain scenarios. But let's first of all go ahead and say we have a circular progress indicator. Now that is not a circular progress indicator like here without having passed in a progress, but now one where we pass in a progress. So we also pass in our progress lambda here, and then you suddenly see how the circular progress indicator fills up as we animate towards the end of our progress. Same thing we can now do with the circular wavy progress indicator. That is the same thing in the end that you can see just has this wavy animation. You can also have this in an indefinite style, so in an infinite, I mean or you could pass a progress. So these are all pretty flexible. And then this would animate in a wavy uh, like style here towards the end and then transition to a circular uh, shape again and start all over with our progress value. And the same thing is possible here with a linear wavy progress indicator like this. And then you can see here we have this wavy shape. So I think it's a matter of taste whether you want that or not, but Material 3 Expressive leaves you the option to choose whether you want to use this top one or the bottom one. Actually curious how this looks like if we don't pass a progress. Oh yeah, okay, that's also quite, 
cool, weird, I don't know. Uh, that is up to you. Uh, but what matters is that all of these different types of progress indicators, you can choose to have either with a progress value or without. However, here comes a UX tip. In certain scenarios, you may find yourself with having two types of progress where the first type of progress or the first type of wait duration comes from an indefinite duration, so where you simply don't know how long the user will have to wait. And the second part will come from a known duration. So the, the example that Google actually gives here uh, that I think makes total sense to explain this is you, have, you, you want to actually connect to some kind of remote server and once connected, you download mm -hmm. a file. The actual connection to the server itself is typically something where you don't know how long that will take, but downloading the file, there you always know, okay, this many bytes have already been transferred from this many total bytes. So for the second part, you can derive a clear progress value, while for the first part, you can't. And if you have the scenario where the first part of the wait time comes from an unknown wait time and the second part is known, then it's very important that you don't mix these progress indicators. So you don't say, hey, first for the uh, wait time where I don't know how long the user needs to wait, I'm using wavy one. And for the second one, I'm using a linear progress indicator. But actually uh, make sure that these progresses here stay the same. So for the first part of the animation, you would show the linear progress indicator here, for example, in this fashion while you are actually connecting. And once the connection is established, then you replace this composable one that takes a progress here for the actual download, because then you have a smooth transition from the same type of indicator into the same type of indicator, but with a progress being passed. So just as a summary, those are all the different types of progress indicators that we get with Material 3 design. These top ones here that don't have a progress being passed are mainly to just show if you're loading something that takes between 200 and 5,000 milliseconds and these bottom ones where you pass a progress value, they make sense if the wait time is longer than five seconds and you actually also know the progress at all times. So you're able to animate this uh, loading here. All right, if you like this video, then down below you'll also find a link to our website where you'll find premium Android and Kotlin multi-platform content about premium courses, mentorship programs, our gamified community in the mobile dev campus that pushes you to practice your mobile development skills in an as easy as possible setting. Check it out. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video, in the next video of this series, Material 3 Expressive series. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.